Kaiser Willis. Hey there folks, this is Josh, Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today is another day we're gonna be working on Popcorn the Willis Jeep. I've got an awesome announcement to make for you later on in the video. We're gonna be looking the Jeep over, looking the frame over a little closer. I'll show you the generator that I pulled off and why I think it needs a nice rebuild. We're gonna go through a bunch of tools today. So over the past couple months, I've been picking up tools for the shop. I didn't start off with all the tools I would need to restore this Jeep, so we're buying tools as we go. So today on the farm vlog, we're going to take a look at the Jeep. We're going to talk about some tools and some products that we're going to use on working on popcorn, the Willys Jeep, and you're going to like what I have to show you. All right. Woo! is a wheel problem Woo! right here. The wheel needs to be straightened up. It's not going back the way we want it to. That should solve all our problems. Here we go. Woo, I think my head's up. <laughs> Once again, we had to pull the Grand National back out of the garage so we could work on popcorn. You'll get to go back to your home. Don't you worry, little guy. So in here, inside the shop, is Popcorn the Willis. Popcorn the Willis's frame look good. There's a couple places I'm gonna need to weld up. I do not have a stick welder. I'm gonna have to pick up a stick welder. In this box over here is the first tool I'm gonna show you that we picked up for working on the Jeep. Don't need sunglasses inside here. Now I told you guys this is gonna be a big tool episode. So first of all, let's unbox this tool and then I'll tell you why we got it, okay? So as you can see, I like Lowe's. Lowe's rocks, woo! I love my Lowe's store, my local Lowe's store, good people. Just a great North Carolina company. We're gonna take our cover off. Our brand new shiny Cobalt 60 gallon two stage compressor. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So we needed this compressor to run what's in this box. Now, Lowe's is changing over a little bit. So some of their old cobalt stuff is going on sale big time, guys. So that's how we picked this up for a great deal. Normally that compressor would be somewhere near 800 bucks. I think we have under 500 bucks in that thing. Awesome. Now that's tool number one. Tool number two in this box is from Eastwood, and we bought a bunch of rust encapsulator to encapsulate this Jeep frame. In other words, you spray this on rusty areas or areas with a little bit of surface rust, it seals off the rust and it keeps it from rusting again, and you can paint right over top of it. So we've got a sandblast cabinet, some rust encapsulator, some other cool products from Eastwood. My buddy turned me on to this company, rubberized undercoating and heat and sound barrier and chassis black. So we're not gonna powder coat popcorn. We're gonna paint it chassis black. We're gonna prime it, paint it and make it shine. But there's really no use in powder coating this thing. If we wanna seal it off and keep it from rusting, shoot, it's 70 years old already and it hasn't rusted through. So I don't think we have to worry about that. Now, let's show you the next tool that we got. So the next tool that we got is called a go jack. We got four of these go jacks. I assembled this one just to show you. This is a jack system that you use to raise the vehicle up and move it around and then you can set it back down. Rather than having to slide a jack in, raise it up and put it on those little casters we've been using, we've got go jack and go jack is made in America. I saw these on Stanley Dirt Monkey's channel when he was at SEMA. So I reached out to the company and they gave us a great deal on a set of them and we're gonna show them to you today. Rad. Okay, the next thing we needed was air tools. So we picked up some Cobalt air tools at Lowe's. Once again, guys, go into Lowe's. There is a buggy probably in your local Lowe's or a cart that has Cobalt tools. They're changing over. I'm telling you, there's some savings there. Go check it out. So we bought a DA sander and an air die grinder that we're gonna need to help clean this frame up. Okay, let's talk about the chassis. You guys saw me pressure wash this chassis. It looks super duper good. It looks like it's ready for me to go painting on it. Now, I don't have 
a lot of tools that I need. I'm gonna need a tubing bender and a flaring tool because I'm gonna run all new brake lines and all new fuel lines. We want everything to be right and tight. I'm not sure if I'm gonna have to replace the U-joints or not. It's probably a good idea to go ahead and do that, but they will accept grease, which is cool. Now, the big announcement. Let's talk about the big announcement. I am not selling the Jeep. Once we took it apart, once I got working on it, I spoke to my friend out in Wyoming about buying the Jeep and really how this all kind of came to pass was I called him and I said, hey man, how would you like for me to do a tribute build? Like I'll build the Jeep and do it as a tribute to the high bar and we'll call it the high bar edition. He said, yeah, that'd be cool. And then about three weeks later, he contacted me back and he said, hey man, you know, I kind of like to have that Jeep. So that's the point where we made the announcement to you guys that we're going to be building the Jeep for someone. Well, we're going to be building the Jeep for someone. It is not going to be sold. It's going to stay right here on the farm with me and we're going to continue building Popcorn the Willys Jeep for us, which takes a huge load off of my chest because I didn't want him to have this 1952 Jeep up in the mountains of Wyoming and lose brakes or lose power or get hurt on it and then I would feel guilty. So I think the right thing to do is keep it here, keep it here on the farm, part of the history of the farm and show my dad once it gets rebuilt, let him take it for a drive. It's probably gonna drive just the same as it did when he had it and probably the same as it did in 1952. What we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna get a little spot, I'm gonna clean up on the frame and we're gonna show you how this rust encapsulator works and talk a little bit more about it. In the next few episodes I've got to buy an engine hoist I don't have an engine hoist but I do have an engine stand we're gonna to have to pull the engine and the transaxle or transmission out of here and clean up the chassis and we're gonna to have to put some new motor mounts in place so the motor mounts are roachy and rotted there's a lot of work that needs to be done here and a lot of tools that need to be bought. I'm willing to put in the investment if you guys are willing to keep on watching. We're gonna get busy, we're gonna clean up a little area here, we're gonna hit it with some rust encapsulator and see what it looks like and kinda judge on how we're gonna do the whole frame. Lots of fun stuff to go here on the Willis Jeep just not lots of time to get it done. I'm kind of taxed. It's the springtime and it's a lot of work on the farm. So we'll get in here and we'll work on it as much as we possibly can. Guys, if you think about it right now, pound that like button. If you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. There's just so much fun going on here on the farm. I just want to share it with you. It's fun. It's awesome. It's a good time. Pound the like button and hit the little bell icon. It'll notify you when I post a new video. I'm going to take my wire wheel and I'm going to hit this frame and then we're going to hit it with some rust encapsulator. See what she looks like. Here's my little grinding wheel. Let's see how how she does. Is that thing on high? No. There we go. Nice. <laughs> I need to work on my technique. <laughs> have my glasses on for that. So rust encapsulator, this is black, matte black finish rust encapsulator. It says you can apply it directly over surface rust, top coat with almost any paint or use a top coat, prevents rust from spreading and penetrates deep and cures fast. Awesome. So it's going to work out perfect. We don't want to put the money into powder coating. It just doesn't make any sense for me to put that much money into powder coating and sandblasting this whole machine. When you sandblast something like this, there's going to be sand in everything, just sand everywhere. So, or media blast it any kind of way. Sandblasting would be fine for this kind of job. I just don't want to fool with all that sand. I don't want grit in my suspension parts. I don't want grit in my engine parts. I want to take this and wipe it clean. And I think this is the right tool for the job. I think this is the right tool for the guy in his garage. You know what I mean? So here's our first go at chassis black. And we're going to start down low here. Actually, there we go. Keep about eight or 10 inches between me and the work at hand here. I'm really impressed. I don't want any runs or anything like that. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect because we're going to top coat it 
with chassis black. We've already got the chassis black. We'll show you that too. Look at that. Cannot argue with that. A little bit of wire wheel work and a little bit of rust encapsulator and this frame's gonna look brand new. Then we're gonna hit it with some chassis black. So that's the plan with the frame. And I've got my chassis black over here too. I went ahead and ordered basically everything I needed. Where are you at? Here is some urethane activator. We also got some rubberized undercoating for those spots that we wanna put some extra protection in. And we got a product called let me get over here and get it. <laughs> Everybody's been telling me use Pour 15. We got an, a product from Eastwood. Now Eastwood sells Pour 15, but this is called Heat and Sound Barrier Coating. This is what we're gonna undercoat the body of the Jeep with. Cool. And then we'll hit the frame with some, where is it? Where is it? Dig for it. Don't earn it. <laughs> there it is. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> here we are, ceramic chassis black awesome let's open it up let's see what she looks like we got spray guns in here too all this stuff is from eastwood this was recommended to me by a real good friend of mine who has a body shop he said you just can't beat eastwood products he uses them on all of his restorations so good stuff if a pro body man recommended it then i'm totally cool with it there's an arrow <laughs> point towards enemy <laughs> Okay, buddy, where's your knife? Now that's a knife. Let's see what we got in here. What she look like. You guys might be doing your own project, watching me do mine, or thinking about that one you've got out there in the yard. So, here we are. Cool. Ceramic chassis black. Awesome. Good stuff. Cool. Man. So this paint's starting to cure over here on the frame. Let me show you, it's starting to dry out. It is a matte finish and the ceramic chassis black, I believe is gonna be a shiny finish. So we'll be able to tell where we've gone over the frame. And this frame isn't that big, check it out. This thing's only like 12, 13 feet long. It's not that big at all. The paint's curing. Let me get you down here close up. So you can see it almost looks like a rubberized undercoating just does a fantastic job look at that compared to up here so this is what it looked like before and then this is just with the rust encapsulator this is before we hit it with chassis black that's awesome let's get a peek under here and make sure i got good coverage eh, kinda i need to get in there and clean up a little bit guys you need to remember we are not doing a concourse restoration i guess is what you call it on this jeep we're doing a farm restoration so we want to be able to use it on the farm we want to be able to ride it around in the parade my local parade and i think we're doing the right thing pretty awesome let's look at some more stuff let's unbox the go jacks i've already gotten three of them unboxed i want to show you how impressive the packaging is this stuff is all made in the usa good stuff very good stuff high quality stuff again i saw this on stanley dirt monkeys channel on sema and i was like man that's 10 times better than the little roll around wheels i've been using so check them out i think they're zendex tool corporation so they come in a box with some heavy duty casters i'll show you how it works and then we'll use it on the jeep and guys i'm not bragging to you about all the cool tools look at me if i was building a house i'd be showing you the water heater too you know if something is good i want to show it to you if something is not good i'm going to tell you right away so understand that for sure i'll tell you something i don't like my frigidaire microwave <laughs> two years old and i had to replace it not cool Ugh. so this thing is fairly ee, bye bye box fairly heavy the way it works is your tire, and you'll see this in a minute, your tire rides on this piping right here. And this is powder coated and galvanized piping. And basically once we get our wheels installed, it takes like 45 seconds to put one of these things together. It seems like very easy. The bags are tough. <laughs> so 
It has four casters on it, four heavy duty casters or wheels. They have several different models for different sizes. So if you wanted to pick up like a tractor trailer or something like that, you probably are looking at a little heavier model than what I've got for cars. This is the most common model sold according to the guys over at Zendex Tool. So pretty simple. There's a little hole right here and a caster. They're two different size casters. There are little ones on one side and big ones on the other side. Pretty nifty. Put our nut on. We'll just loosely put our nut on then we're gonna take the impact and put them together real good. Pretty simple. Caster number one on, caster number two on there. Oh, flip. And we'll get our other larger wheels. We'll put that guy on. Slides up through the hole. You cannot do this wrong. This is completely dummy proof. Well, I wouldn't say completely. I guess you could do it wrong, but the holes for the bolts on the casters are the exact same size as the nut that goes through it. So, or what, or bolt that goes through it. Oh, good gracious alive. Heavy, heavy tool. Okay, we'll zip these things together. I've got a few nuts to tighten up and we're going to put them underneath the Jeep. Oh, good gracious. She's heavy. All right, let's roll one of these guys over here and show you how they work. Basically, there's a little release. You open it up, slide it into your wheel, tighten it down, flip a lever, and then step. So we'll get you a little close up with this one right here. So you slide it under your wheel, just like so, close it down, flip a little lever right there, and then press. And you can see, it's a little harder to press you're lifting the vehicle, it lifts the car off the ground. Once you get to the level you want it, you mash down. There's a little latch, a lever, holds that foot down, and then you can roll your car any direction you want to. A vast improvement from this guy right here to this Gojack. Very, very cool, very happy. And it's easier to push. Awesome. So when you're restoring a project like this, you never know where you're gonna have to move it around in your shop. So we can put the Grand National in here, keep it parked. We can push the Jeep over into the corner if we need to, or we can take these off really quickly, put them under the Grand National and move it to the side. I'm a tool guy and that is one cool tool. Now we've got what the NASCAR guys are moving their cars around in the shop with. Pretty neat. I'll post a link down in the video description if you guys are interested in checking these out. All right, so guys, where do we go from here? My new best friend right here. <laughs> we gotta take this and some rust encapsulator and clean this frame up. I've gotta get an engine hoist in here. I'm gonna look around, try to find one on Craigslist if I can. I gotta pull this engine and transmission, take off the front bumper, grind everything clean, reinstall a new front bumper and a rear bumper, take care of all the brake lines, all the fuel lines, make sure we've got good brakes, good fuel, do a little bit of work. We may have to replace the leaf springs. Some of those leaf springs are kind of off a little bit. I don't want to replace the leaf springs, but I don't know. If we're going to do it, we should do it right, but I don't want to spend 30 grand on a Jeep that's going to be worth 12. <laughs> it comes a point where money versus nostalgia kind of takes over. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. We've got a lot more work to do on the Jeep. I thought I'd take you around the shop. We're building up tools, an arsenal of tools to get on this Jeep the right way. I don't want to struggle with it. I want to have the right tools in the shop. So next week, hopefully we'll have our compressor wired up and hopefully we'll have our blast cabinet and we'll be working it. We're going to take these wheels off, clean them up, sandblast them, all this little stuff, the fan blade, all the little intricate parts, sandblast them, clean them up and paint them. Guys, thanks a lot for joining me here on the Stony Ridge Farm today. I wanted to show you some cool tools. Again, I'm not here bragging about tools. I'm just showing you what I have to have in order to get this project done. If some of these tools are then I'll let you know so you don't make the same mistakes that I do on your restoration. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge, guys. Woo! In the land of the free.